Thanks for the support as a channel member, Michael Angood. Signings made in key positions. We're still in the top four in the Premier League and it's Champions League knockout round starting today. Things finally are going pretty well here at Arsenal again. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 14 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our Champions League first knockout round, first leg game against Napoli. And we also play against uh, Champions League qualification rivals, West Ham. Although they've fallen off the pace a little bit, actually, as have Peterborough. We play them in the league as well. Since you were last with me, as you can see from here, we are on a little bit of an unbeaten run since the Tottenham game. There was a couple of iffy draws in there, but one of them's in the Carabao Cup, so we didn't really care. It's got us out of the Carabao Cup, which is an important thing. Uh, a draw away against Man City is never a bad result either. And we're now scoring goals in the Premier League again, which is nice. We're in fourth place, at uh, one point ahead of Wolves, three ahead of Liverpool, seven ahead of Tottenham, and only eight points off top of the table. Chelsea... Although, um, I can't speak. Although both Chelsea and Manchester United do have a game in hand on us. So I still maintain we're not in a title race, but we are looking good to get ourselves back into the Champions League next season, which is important. As mentioned, we've signed a couple of players as well. They're the two I showed you in the last episode. So our January business was mainly Aya leaving to go to Inter for £32 million. And uh, we signed a new goalkeeper, Roland Grillo, um, 23-year-old, world-class. He's classed as a world-class goalkeeper. Uh, 23 years old, 20 caps for France already, three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability. We have our forever goalkeeper, Roland Grillo, um, and we've also signed Anthony Asante, who is considered so good that he's had a, given us a boost in shirt sales. Um, he is, well, he was classed as an elite centre-back when we signed him. Only 24 years old, already 14 caps for the Netherlands. We're playing him as a left-back because we needed a left-back. Um, he might eventually end up being a centre-back, but at 5'11", five, at five I'm more inclined to force him into being a full-back. We've got good options at centre-back. But he is now considered the best of those good options. And once again, we are, of course, raiding the Portuguese leagues, which do seem to be a little bit of a gold mine when it comes to bringing in decent quality players. I know there'll be the usual whinging and moaning about spending £75 million on a player. Um, we're still only just at a net transfer deficit this year. We've sold a lot of players. We've still got a very healthy bank balance. Um, we just need to adjust that budget so that we're back within... There you go, stick it to about there. And hold on. Can I not do maths? Three, four, three, six, one, four, three, seventy. There you go. So we're within our budgets. We've got decent money in the bank. And we're still in the Champions League. So to me, we're not even financially mismanaging. FFP is looking fine. We are all good. We've made, we've got a projected profit for the end of this two-year period ending the end of this season of £216 million profit as a club. So you know, I think we're doing okay when it comes to money. Um, there'll still be the, who's exploiting transfers again? I'm going to buy you a dictionary and heart circle the word exploit. <laughs> right, let's go and play Napoli first up. Um, and this is our slightly new look side. So we've got our, both of our new signings are in there, including Grillo in goal, um, which does involve finally a switch to my beloved sweeper keeper rather than the goalkeeper role that Dragovsky was playing because he got all upset about playing a sweeper keeper. We've then got new boy Asante at left back. Gabriel, Tomea and Remy completing the back four. Martinez and Barrow in midfield. Magno, Pedri and Camera supporting Delap up front. I think that is my first choice 11. And now we've finally got some decent strength in depth as well. Dragovsky, very good backup in goal. Um, Gascon can cover either of them at centre-back. Saka could cover left-back, right wing, left wing. Almada can play anywhere across that attack in midfield three or in central midfield. Charisma, another cover at centre-back. Tommy Doyle can cover either central midfield position. Carlos Alberto, the right wing, central midfield, and then not even getting on the bench. Nico Williams was great for us at right back last year. He sat down there, not even getting on the bench, as is Kieran Tierney, who can cover both fullback positions. João Pedro, who's injured at the moment, can play anywhere across the front three. We've got some decent strength in depth, finally, where we can be in a situation where João Pedro and Williams are unavailable and we still have a spare goalkeeper and Kieran Tierney not even able to get on the bench. I still think we need two, three, maybe even four good quality new signings in the summer without selling anybody. I don't want to do another sell to buy summer. I want to be backed by the board 
if we if we qualify for the Champions League again, I'm calling you out now, board. If we're back in the Champions League next year, I need £70 million to spend this summer to go and get three players who can really add to this squad, give us the finishing off the strength and depth that we need. And then in exchange for that £70 million this summer, I'll win you the Champions League next year. There you go, board. I've made you a promise. Alternatively, you don't give me my £70 million. I'm going to leave and go and manage Dortmund or Real Madrid or Juventus or whoever else it might be. Maybe even Napoli, who we're playing now. Right, let's um, let's get into this game and hopefully can put my money where my mouth is. I've just spoken a very good game. Let's see if we're actually a very good side. I think we are. I think we're a very, very good side at this point. And injuries, uh, injuries and suspensions and things um, allowing, I think we have got a very good chance of a deep run in the Champions League this year whilst qualifying for it again through the league. Obviously, we do have a couple of... We still have one or two irreplaceable players, I think. Um, I think Pedro... I guess we've got Almada, who has his moments, but Pedri is usually very, very good. Delap. You know what? I'm talking myself out of it because João Pedro can replace him. But Delap, I think, is a few as a pure finisher. We could probably do with another one of those. Um, behind Asante, we don't have much in the way of another left back. Um, we could probably do with another defender of Asante's quality to play at centre back for us, or maybe even a more natural left back to allow him to go and partner Gascon or Tomea in the middle as we look to move Gabriel on. As he's 31 now, so he's the next one who's going to get moved on. But We've re we've very much refreshed this side, refreshed the entire squad, and now we're just looking to reap what we've sown here at Arsenal. What is Napoli doing here? I would be I'd be having a, an absolute nightmare at the on the touchline if I was watching my defenders and goalkeeper do that. Their their manager's not even looking the right way; he's just casually looking at his watch. He's not at all bothered by what's going on. Just keep the ball, lads. What are they doing? The annoying thing is, it's frustrating me and it's probably frustrating my players. We just want the ball back. We want to play our high tempo, getting in behind, getting to lap in behind like that. That's why they don't want us having the ball because we're not going to faff around with it. We're just going to be direct, be high tempo. If we get the ball, we're going to create chances with it. Pedri now with a corner. Gabriel was there but couldn't get there ahead of the Napoli defender and it's with Magno who's going to look to deliver that back into the box and he does and Delap is there with the header but... It was too far out for a header to ever really threaten the goalkeeper. But goodness me, look at those stats. It really does represent what we've seen on the pitch in that first half. We've got an XG of nearly two. We've had 15 shots to Napoli zero. We are very much going at them. And they're very much being an Italian team away from home in a Champions League knockout round game. And this is where our naivety might come into play because they'll probably nick a goal in this second half. They'll be delighted if this ends nil-nil. And they have very much weathered the storm in that first half and we do need a breakthrough in the second half because I don't want to go there needing to win at their place when we can see just how good they are defensively. What a pass from Barrow to a completely unmarked Rui Camera for his 17th goal of the season. Napoli caught napping. Puns. Puns ahoy. Um, that's just really poor from Napoli after how well they've defended for there to be I mean Barrow's unmarked. Camera completely unmarked and Barrow just finds him really easily. That was that was really odd why they've let that happen. Uh, but I'm certainly not going to complain. It's 1-0 to us and uh, fingers crossed. I mean, we'll take that as a final score. We'd obviously love a second. Um, and if we do grab a second, it'll be interesting to see how Napoli respond, whether they go looking for an away goal or whether they're happy just to keep the scoreline down as much as they can. Camera's in again, but some good defending this time from Napoli. And but he squares it to Magno and Magno makes it too. We've started this second half very well. We're finally getting what we deserve from how well we've played in that first half. And Magno uh, with the easy peasy tap in, it's Barrow again with a beautiful pass to Camera. He knows who he's looking for with these passes. Camera does brilliantly to keep the ball in and then creates an easy as you like chance for Magno to put us 2-0 up. Those two wide players have been very, very good signings for us. And this whole, I mean, this entire front four wasn't here a year and a bit ago, but now they look like they've been playing together for years. Well, we don't want this to concede an away goal here because an away goal gives a huge amount of advantage back to Napoli. But again, really interesting to see 
They've got the ball on the edge of our area, but rather than trying to engineer a shot with it, they've played it all the way back into their own half. They are playing so conservatively and Barrow intercepts again and it's with Pedri. Pedri to Camera. Camera dances past his man, has the shot and the Napoli goalkeeper just pushes it around the post and they are under a lot of pressure again here. A third goal for us and we are very much in control going into this away leg. It's a corner that finds Tamea, but it goes just over from that. Let's have a look at fitness levels of our boys. We don't want to be getting anybody all tired. Uh, so Magno can come off, Almada can come on for him, and then I usually stick Pedri out onto the left and play Almada in behind the striker when I make that change. Asante's tiring, so we're going to bring Saka on for him. Asante, not quite fully up to speed with our high tempo game yet. And we've had to substitute him a couple of times, which is, again, one of the just one of the reasons why I'm playing him left back rather than centre back. Because, you know, I don't really like substituting centre backs. But then I guess he wouldn't be tiring as much if he was playing at centre back either. But we signed him to play left back. That's some unusual positioning there from Gillo in goal. We got away with it, but he did leave a gap for Napoli to shoot at there, which... I don't know, perhaps he's a genius because he invited them to shoot from a narrow angle knowing, knowing that he'd get there. But I'm not really comfortable with him inviting the opposition to take a shot. It's good to see he's backing himself, though. Proper sweeper keeper. Gabriel to Tomea, back to Tomea again. And he plays it forward looking for camera, but it's a poor pass this time. And Napoli once again have the ball, but Tomeo intercepts, and this time the pass is much better. Delap nods it down to Pedri, cutting inside off the left. Almada's in, and Almada scores, and that's 3 0. And now we've got to be feeling good going into the away leg back in Italy. Arsenal 3, Napoli 0 on 77 minutes, and we are playing some very, very good football today. This is, um, I'm trying to think of a previous game we could contrast this with where we've dominated but not been as clinical as we have been today. I'm sure there are examples of it that the Lelujo historians will share with us down in the comments. But we um, this, feel, this feels a bit coming-of-age performancey today. We are just playing very, very well. And we're going to bring Carlos Alberto on for Martinez as our final change in the midfield. Um, and Saka has got a throw and an opportunity for us to go 4-0 up. Um, Almada crosses to Delap and Delap with the header that comes just off the top of the crossbar. Um, and I mean, XG wise, we deserve that fourth goal. We're on a 3.99 XG, 29 shots in this game. It's the kind of match stats that you see when you're a Premier League team playing against a League Two team. Napoli have had absolutely no ambition. We've talked about um, the AI in these knockout games multiple times in FM21 now. They just seem to have no ambition. I can understand starting the game thinking defensively, but they haven't really adjusted as the game has gone on. And if experience of FM21 so far tells me anything, because we learned this a lot with Leicester back in the beta, Napoli will probably be just as defensive, just as unambitious in the return fixture that you're going to see tomorrow. And that's what makes it really weird, because they really need to try and win that one now. And I suspect they're going to sit back and try and soak up pressure again. And it just makes no sense. But we'll worry about that tomorrow. For now, we're going to try and keep our good run of form going and get rid of the Champions League hangover curse and beat West Ham. Right, just the one change for the West Ham game. Fitness levels seem to have held up pretty well. Um, so we're just going to bring Almada in for Pedri, um, really just because I can't decide which one of them is the best player in that role. If you have a look at their season so far, Almada is on a 7.04 in his last five games, 7.02 for the season. Pedri, um, a 6.92 for the season, but has stepped things up in the last five games with a 7.16. So I'm just ro trying to get better. We've talked about rotating a couple of times in recent episodes, and I'm trying to get better at it. And that seems to be a position where we've got two very, very evenly matched players. And it does kind of make sense just to quite regularly swap them over, just rotate and keep them both fit. A uh, corner comes in from Almada and Gabriel with the header that goes just over. It was only last episode that West Ham were right up here battling with us for a Champions League qualification spot. They've definitely fallen off the pace now. Um, it looks like we I guess we're a later kickoff today because we've somehow fallen down to fifth place. Remy with the uh, with the corner, not the corner, the throw in on that right hand side ends up getting the ball back for the cross, looking for Delap in the middle but can't find him. But Santi's in loads of space, slots it in nicely for Magno, and the wide players are at it again. And that's a lovely little pass from Asante. Only a centre back, you say? I mean that he, that wasn't the pass a centre back plays. That was uh, that was a lovely piece of football. 
uh, Martinez spraying out to Asante, who's in all the space, and then he just slots a little through ball in for Magno. He's not missing from there. That's not what he does. Let's try and get all the latest scores on here. I don't know why they've disappeared. Um, so there are a couple of games going on at the moment, but I guess um, the majority of them took place on Saturday and we're the Sunday game. But as it stands right now, we are up to third in the league and Magno's scored again. And he is looking better. I mean, these two wide players... It is, I can't, I mean, I would love to jump in a, in a time machine and there's been plenty of opportunities I could say this in recent versions of FM. I'd love to jump in a time machine, go back to FM 17, FM 18, Kev, and just show him how all my teams are built around the best wingers in the world these days compared to, he was the man who didn't know what a winger was. He refused to use wingers. But now Magno and Camera, goodness me, are they good players? And Magno is just dancing through for his hat trick. Uh, but the save is made by the West Ham keeper and it's another corner. And we are going to, uh, I mean, we're good at these as well. That's the thing. We're good from open play, but we're very good from set pieces as well. And Gabriel's there and his header goes just wide. And it's 2-0 now. 25 minutes gone, still 2-0. And that league table is starting to look pretty attractive for a team that, I mean, I was seeing hashtag Kev out in the comments two days ago. Um, and now it's looking like the season, all of a sudden, is going exactly to plan. This is what we wanted this year. Almada plays it into Magno again. Uh, Magno dances past his man, has the shot. Probably should have done a little bit, be a little bit better with that shot. It's straight at the keeper. Um, he either needs to do better with the shot or just play it across to Dalap, who stood there in space for the tap-in. But if you're going to cut inside Thierry Henry style and have the shot on your right foot then you've got to test the keeper properly and not just basically chip it up into his hands. West Ham, their first proper attack of the game, but Martinez is there to intercept and probably not distribute it as well as you would hope from our deep line playmaker, but good to see him getting involved in some defensive work. And now Camera has the chance to just get his head down and run down the right-hand side. What a lovely drilled cross for the lap. And it's 3-0. And we can score all the different kinds of goals. It's not just one flavour of goal here at Arsenal now. We can do it all. And Camera just out and out wing play here. Uses his pace to get down the wing. Spots the opportunity to drill that low cross over to the lap. Still up, still has a little bit of work to do. He's still got to take it around the defender. But I think both the centre-backs are probably expecting the floated cross or a slightly higher cross for Delap to try and compete in the air. That's not Delap's strength. He wants it exactly the way he got it. Drilled into feet. Keep, the defender's on the back foot and he just takes it round him and sticks it in the bottom corner. Beautiful stuff. It's 3-0 at half-time. And once again, for the second game in a row, our opponents haven't even had a shot in the first half. We are dominating opposition at the moment. Long may it continue. Magno plays it in for camera. Bit lucky to end up with the ball, but the finish was always going into the back of the net. I think it's a slip from the West Ham left back who, I mean, he's going to make mistakes because of the pressure he's under from having camera on him all the time. But I think this one is a slip. Let's have a little look at it. It's Magno cutting inside again, playing the ball across for camera. In fact, he slid in for it, misjudged it completely and just made it an even better through ball for camera and camera's not missing from that kind of situation. It's 4-0 now. And uh, West Ham, are they're, 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 be, they're being given uh, what we feel like we've owed a lot of teams in the last year and maybe haven't delivered. Uh, but now we've got our balance. We've got our players in form. And our, our attacking players are starting to play with pomp. Um, someone was going to get this. And it's West Ham who are getting it. And we're absolutely smashing them. We just need to keep a little bit of an eye on fitness levels. Camera is tire tiling. I mean, he could be tiling. He can do everything. But I think he's actually tiring. So Carlos Alberto can come on for him. Another example of the beautiful strength in depth we've got here now. Um, I'm also going to take off Magno. And we can bring Saka on for him. And he can just play as a winger on that left-hand side. And then I think I'm going to take off Barrow in midfield as well. Bring on Tommy Doyle. Uh, Barrow doesn't miss a lot of football. Doyle hasn't played much football. So it makes sense to keep him match fit, keep him involved and in, rotate him in a little bit more whilst giving Barrow the rest. Almada is tiring. Would have been nice to be able to bring Pedri on as well. Where's these five substitutes? Remy probably wants to come off as well. But we can just make those rotations before the next game. Look at West Ham. One shot and they missed. We've absolutely ruined them there. More of that and we might just win the league yet. That was a performance. Right, we will be back tomorrow and we will have the second leg of the Napoli uh, knockout round game. We'll have Swansea in the league and then hopefully over the course of next week, um, you're going to see us continue to progress through the Champions League. 
Could this be the last season of this year's non-lethal legend? I've said it before and I will confirm it again here. If we win the champ, when we win the Champions League, that is the series done. We're not going to do any of this go, doing extra stuff after the Champions League win this, win this year. The goal is win the Champions League. Will it be at Arsenal? Will we leave in the summer? Will it happen now? Will it take years? The way we're playing, I wouldn't necessarily bet against it happening really rather soon. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.